Hi Virgo, welcome to your April 2024 Astro Taroscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign, but if you're only going to watch one, make sure it's for your ascendant. It's going to be that much more accurate for you on that day-to-day -day level. With that said, remember they are general readings. Make sure you use your own discernment. If you would like to know, I am using whole sign tropical western astrology for my uh, calculations, if you want to call them that. And uh, if you, if I if I ever forget the date or uh, the transit or the all the rest of it, you'll always find that stuff in the description box below. All right. So <clears throat> with that said, before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise. They help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So I just had to turn the wheel there because it is Virgo that we are talking about at this moment in time. So the first transit that I want to look at is Mercury, your ruling planet, right? Your ruling star in the heavens and the sky is going, oh, okay, so you've got jumping cards, so we will stop there, um, is going retrograde, right? So Mercury is you. Mercury rules your body, it rules your mind, your communication, your outlook. Uh, it's also your personality. It's how you navigate and move through the world. World. Mercury also rules your career, your social status, the most visible part of you, how people really see you out in the world and including your legacy, right? So there's something about this Mercury retrograde that might feel it might make you feel sort of somewhat quite exposed. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, right? One of the things about Virgo is you're very happy to be behind the scenes. Like Virgo isn't Leo, right? It doesn't need to be out there for everybody to see. But it's important that you allow yourself to shine from time to time. And I think even though this is a Mercury retrograde in the eighth house, I think it's quite important to allow yourself to shine in some regard, all right? Now, um, that's the card that, that jumped out. As the ruler of your mind, your body, and your outlook, This is, and it's in a retrograde in your eighth house, right? This is a flavor through Aries, and it's one of rethinking your traumas, your challenges, and maybe even reliving some of those. Now, I know a lot of you are like, how is this empowering, Raph? Now, in a way that's, but it's not in a way that's bad for you. It's like, you're looking at all of these things, and you're seeing like, holy shit, I've actually come through quite a lot. You're seeing your challenges, you're seeing your traumas, you're seeing the things that you thought at the time were gonna break you, and you realize like, holy crap, I've got so much strength, I've got so much courage, I've got so much resilience. It's like you're reframing the stuff that should have broken you, and you're finding a moment to say to yourself like, but did you die though? Like, <laughs> right? like this is one of those moments when you're like, okay, cool, actually, you know what? I'm still here, bossing it. This is cool, right? Jokes aside, it's like you're seeing, because this is in the eighth house, it's relationships to financial institutions. Obviously, the eighth house is debts, loans, taxes, big money, financial institutions, all of that. You might backtrack on some offers and things that no longer sort of feel relevant. You might even question the validity of such organizations within your life and the assistance that they're giving you. So let's say you have a financial advisor. You might be looking at that person now and saying, OK, what is it that you really do for me? And is it really, you know, am I getting what I pay for? Um, this could be a really powerful time for therapy or counseling right but it will it'll need to be on your own terms and at your own pace because remember mercury as the mind energy when it goes retrograde our mind our thoughts tend to be a bit more internalized right so mercury's also being the ruler of your career you might be going through a deep transformation of what you feel like you want to share with the world, right? And what you feel is okay to be public and what isn't. So you might start sort of phasing things in and out uh, at a time where everything seems to be in flux. And really the truth of it is the eighth house is about transformation. It's about death and rebirth. It's about regeneration. And this regeneration could be happening on a very visceral level, but it could also be happening on a very public level as well. So you know, it's kind of like one of those moments where you're letting people or things in to get a sort of really good look at who you are or who you now choose yourself to be. So before this, you've got the four of wands. Beautiful. 
with the King of Pentacles, usually an Earth sign male, Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo, with the Six of Pentacles. This is some kind of elevation and advancement, and I love this for interactions with financial institutions. This is you securing the money that you need for a home. This is securing the money that you need for a personal project. It's uh, money that, you, you know, and because the Eighth House is debts as well, this could be you clearing or settling a debt, or maybe you're just renegotiating your credit card to get a better rate. It could be that that sort of simple and mundane, but it could also be where you really are getting good or solid footing or feedback from a larger financial institution in some regard, all right? So awesome stuff. I, I actually like this transit for you, even if it is a Mercury retrograde. So on the, that's on the 2nd of the month. On the 8th of the month, we have a new moon solar eclipse in that same part of the sky. This is an 8th house eclipse, right? So these eclipses, as part of this larger eclipse cycle and season for you, it really is all about money, resources, finances, values, self-esteem, self-worth. This is about your money versus their money. It's about big money versus small money, right? And this eclipse in particular is showing you how to finally and fully heal a financial trauma or a past issue around money and finances. And you're able to really ascend like beyond the dross. I like this because this uh, eclipse, where are you, Luna? This eclipse is happening in your eighth house, right? So big financial institutions, financial money, resources, financial partnerships, all of that kind of stuff. What I love about this is because it's conjunct Chiron at 19 degrees, right? This eclipse is conjunct Chiron. This is the sun's most exalted place in the chart. And this is happening, right? The sun for you rules your 12th house. In a lot of ways, this is you rewriting the financial script that you have at the deepest levels of yourself. Wherever you've had bad habits around money, you are going to heal them. Wherever it is that your familial history around money, where your parents told you that money doesn't grow on trees, we can't afford it, we don't have that, rich people are all crooks, whatever the stuff is around your money story, you're rewriting that now in a really powerful way. And if you've had problems or issues around money or resources come up, up for you this could be where they come to a close remember eclipses unpack over three to six months so it's not happening overnight right this is it will take time you might have spiritual help here or a trigger might be pressed that gets you to really dig into what your money story is and what it means for you to break out of it. Because Mercury is still retrograde in this space for you, it could be an old debt that comes up, but it comes up for true release and sort of re release on a karmic level. The eighth house rules debts, but it can also be people and situations that we're indebted to. So, and as the moon for you rules your friendships, it might be a friend who triggers this conversation for you, or even an institutional or associative tie, right? Because this is uh, larger groups, associations as well. This allows you to evolve in a way that creates freedom and autonomy like you've never felt on a financial level before. I'm totally here for this for you. So for this, you've got the four of pentacles. Are you going to hang on to your old money story, Virgo? Or are you going to release it? You've got this with the lover's card, which is like literally your 10th house, uh, you know, because the 6th house is Gemini. <coughs> Sorry, the, the lover's card is Gemini. It's the number 6 card, though. Uh, and then you've got the Knight of Cups. So there are financial choices and decisions that will be on your mind at this time and things that you will be sort of deliberating on or over. I actually see this being very good for you because it feels to me like you're going to be in a space where you are feeling like you actually have a choice. You actually have a say. It's like what I decide from this moment in time when it comes to my finances, my money and my resources and my financial commitments, concerns, interactions, etc. It's on me, right? I get to choose. I get to decide. I'm totally here for this for you. I love it. I really do. And remember the lover's card is a partnership card. So where you are having sort of 
financial commitments and, and connections, these are also coming up for review because of this eclipse. Now, on the 18th of the month, Jupiter and Uranus are finally getting it on after flirting with each other for the last 11 months in the sign of Taurus. They finally come into a conjunction in your ninth house of your spiritual beliefs and ideologies, higher wisdom, foreign travel, uh, legal matters and proceedings. It's also the space and the house of publishing, book deals, all of that good stuff is taking place for you at this moment in time. So I'm here for it. You're getting a power boost here, right? This is one of the luckiest houses in the chart it's light and buoyant and it's a space like it's a light and buoyant space and it's one that can bring healing into your life whereas the eighth house is going to be like that heavy sort of get into it kind of healing the ninth house is like the fresh air that the dragon breathes like if you've seen the harry potter films you know in the deathly hallows when the dragon breaks out of gringotts and it before it flies off it just kind of takes a moment to smell the fresh air and just say oh Ah, I'm free, right? There's there's likely to be a feeling of freedom with this. Uranus is the great awakener and it is the change maker. And because it rules Aquarius, it has a big, powerful link to the energy of freedom. Conjunct Jupiter, the lord of abundance, blessings, growth, lightness, buoyancy, happiness, right? It, it, sweetness and light. It's You know, it's more than that, but you kind of get my drift. This is that moment where you breathe a moment of fresh air and go... Ah, I've transcended that, right? Uranus has been here for a while. It's upgrading your higher ideals and your philosophies, breaking you out of old patterns of thinking, of learning. There's, uh, and as I say, right, these two have kind of been doing this dance for a while and now it comes exact. I like this for connecting with foreign spaces, places and people in ways that now you kind of realise like this is important. This is what I need to really transcend or to break out of my, not even a rut, but to break out of my own traditions, my own self-imposed traditions. There are new connections and opportunities to travel coming in, uh, to study, to grow a whole new world, like a whole world of new people, places and situations and things are awaiting you. Uranus rules your sixth house, right, of your body, your health and vitality. And it's like you discover a way or come by a way that is spiritual in nature to look after your physical health and vitality. And it might be a fusing of the two. It could be new work opportunities that come up or even on the job training that brings connections and coaches and mentors and gurus into your life who really have the good stuff. You know, people that really know what they're doing or really know what they're talking about. For this, you've got the Ace of Wands, new lease on life with the hanged man through spiritual it's like new lease on life energy passion vitality but with the hanged man it has a decidedly spiritual element to it this could be spiritual realizations or understandings it could be spiritual downloads or insights that come in for you and this with the king of wands which is all about visibility this is in the ninth house of broadcasting publishing podcasts books, uh, blogs, all of that stuff is found in the ninth house. And look, I love this for you because I think it could be, you know, it's also worth mentioning because the King of Wands is all about visibility, right? So this is some way that you become more visible, but more importantly, this is a once in 14 year transit. And unless you're born on the day that this happens, the likelihood that you see another one of these conjunctions in the sign of Taurus in your lifetime is very, very slim to none. All right. So this is a big deal for everybody. And I'm totally here for this. All right. And then finally, on the 28th of the month, Mars is going to conjunct Neptune. And this for you is going to happen in your seventh house of partnerships, relationships and significant others. But this can be personal, professional or platonic, right? Your seventh house is not just intimate relationships, it's all manner of contracts and commitments. And as if that wasn't enough, so we've got Luna at 28 of Sag in your fourth house of home, family, property, real estate. We've got Mars conjunct Neptune in your seventh house of relationships. And then we've got Venus at 28 degrees. Mars and Neptune are at 28 Venus is at 28 of Aries at the same time. This is a lot of energy at 28 degrees, which means the Cancerian part of your chart is indicated in some way, which is group associations, your higher goals, aspirations, visions and dreams, and also benefactors that can help or assist you. Now, it is a square, 
right? And usually I don't mention lunar transits in these because they're so fleeting, but this one felt like it was relevant in some way. So this is fourth house, seventh house squaring off. The family, you know, the, the place of living, the home, etc., is having some kind of tension with the relationship, the partnership, or the contract in some way. Mars conjunct uh, Neptune is the spiritual warrior that is willing to fight for and die for their beliefs should they have to. Luna in the fourth is at 28 degrees as well. Because of all of this, it's like there's a, an issue with the family and some kind of group association or future plan that you have that maybe upsets the balance between these two aspects of your life. For this, you've got the Emperor with the Fool card, okay, and the Two of Cups. So it's literally like, for some of you, I can tell you, if you're partnered, married, or in a long-term commitment, your father and your significant other are really not getting along at this time. There could be some kind of spontaneous, bzz, right? It could be if you're single that you meet somebody and maybe a, a father figure, maybe even a boss who is, you know, really close to you says, actually, you know what? I don't like this person. They're not for you, right? Either which way, I think you might be surprised at what comes up at this moment in time. And it may lead to conversations or development around a relationship, right? So for some of you, this might be that your boss or, you know, somebody whose opinion you really value says, no, that person's not right for you because I feel like I am, right? So I wouldn't be, it's not a guarantee for all of you, but I wonder if for some of you, this is one of those moments. Um, yeah, that's as much as I want to say. Uh, ah, yes, and because the fourth house is implicated with Luna in the fourth house, she understands this house because the fourth house is naturally the space of Cancer. But the moon for you rules that 11th house. If you've got hopes, aspirations, goals, visions, and dreams about owning a home, purchasing a home, uh, you know, renting a home, all of that kind of stuff, this moment will bring some tension up, but it will, it will provide the push that you need in order to get past it. All right. And then for your lunations on the, so that new moon solar eclipse, let's have a look. Your human design oracle deck card is the gate 28 and possible. And this <laughs> is an interesting card. It basically says that all of this stuff that we discussed in the eighth house, it's not just probable that your financial life is going to improve. It's totally possible, right? Like this can actually happen. Anything that you think, you know, that's unlikely or that's never going to happen, you might be pleasantly surprised over this next three to six months as this eclipse energy unfolds for you. So I'm intrigued by this. And I will say that one of the messages behind this card is not to give up hope. All right. And then on the 23rd of the month, we will have the full moon in the sign of Scorpio. All right, that's Luna in Scorpio with the sun in Taurus. And your message for this, because this is in your third house of communications, conversations, interactions, is the gate 33 and looking back, right? And so the message behind this card, interesting because it's your third house, right? The So Denise, the lady who created this, and uh, says, oh, um, one of the things that she always says about this card is it's a remembrance gate. So this could be not only memory, like looking back or nostalgia, but it means that this full moon is going to have an element of it where it brings something or someone up from your past to really be looked at in a way that can be utilized or special for you at this moment in time, right? Because it's a third house, there's a lot to do with your mind going on here as well. And Luna loves to be in the third house. This is where she exalts, right? She, she does good work here in the third. So this could be a time where you really do get more organized. It could be a time where you put everything into its plate, just like you like to do right doing all of that sorting and sifting this could be a really wonderful time to do it and it could illuminate to you what your mind and your thinking is either doing or hindering for you at this time if you want to get your personal astro taroscope done with me you can do so on the link in the description box below before we start uh, before we start uh, before we go just want to say thank you so much i wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff have a fantastic uh, month let me know in the comments how it shapes up take care and i'll see you soon